so we were talking about going viral, and, yes. and and we we talked about how going viral is not the solution. Not the solution, yeah. right? Like like a lot of people want to they want to go viral, yep. viral, and everything. They want to have that content that just takes off. Um, but I think the words you used were uh, going viral is not what you think it is, yeah. or, or something along those lines, right? So let, like. Why? Why do you say that? Well, I think. Well, it's I, I, what I do want to say is I don't think it's not valuable, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it's not what you think. Like going viral is not actually going to get you all of the sales that you think you're going to do. But there is a way to use it, mm-hmm. right? And so most people have the idea that well, if I can get this video or this post or picture or whatnot seen a couple million times, then that alone right. will generate more sales. And I just haven't seen that to be the case in many instances, but there are ways to capitalize on that. So I know you said you had someone that recently had a post go pretty viral. Yeah. So I I have an office at, uh, they call it a creative studio, but it's an old parking garage that they've converted uh, into a bunch of different studios for artists and things. And uh, I kind of got in super early when they weren't entirely sure if it what what if it was going to be for artists or something else or kind of working spaces. And yep. so I'm I'm the sole not like artist, sculptor, whatever. I just yep. have my corner office and I just work out of it. But I like being around the creative energy. And I oftentimes talk with them about marketing and things. And they, they'll yeah. have questions about all of that stuff. Um, and, uh, well, one girl, she does uh, she she does these amazing uh, – uh, one, one of these artists, her name's Sarah um, Austin. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll mention her because you should go like check out her stuff. Yeah. But, but uh, she had um, she does these amazing wood colored pencil okay. drawings, and uh, she had a, a reel that went nuts, and she had four or five million views. Got it. And I think when she had that post go viral, I think she only had a few thousand followers. Yeah. Right. So that was a big deal. Oh yeah. She's super excited about it. Got a ton more followers. I think her follower count went up by almost 20 grand or something like that. Uh, Super cool, like very exciting. Uh, And and I was talking with some of the other artists there, um, you know, about that because they all want to go viral and everything. And and, and it turns out she didn't really, she got a lot of followers, got a lot of kind of traction and things, but none of that really converted over into sales. Yep. Right. And so none of it turned into selling of her art or anything along those lines. And so we were just kind of chatting about that. And I mentioned this to you. And yeah. that's where we kind of came up with this, uh, you know, idea. Now now she's putting into to play some some sort of a, a sales process, yep. putting together some offers that she thinks might resonate a little bit more with the Instagram crowd, maybe be a little bit more of an impulse purchase yep. uh, and, and kind of exploring that a little bit. So it hasn't been a bad thing, but it's also like you go viral, yeah. it's super exciting and cool and everything, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't always translate over into sales. Well, it's actually a good lesson mm-hmm. to for if someone goes viral, mm-hmm. they themselves can actually see that just being seen more doesn't complete the actual sales cycle. Right. Right. And so here's here's basically what Blake was talking about. She's coming up with offers and things mm-hmm. like that. Is now, what you can do is retarget. So anyone who watched that video right. or engaged, you can retarget them with an ad with a direct offer that, se- that basically sells something related to what that video was. Because one of the things that happens, posts that go viral on social media are never sales-oriented. No. That's like the opposite of what the platforms <laughs> actually want. And so if you go viral... It's not going to be something where you say, hey, and by the way, I have something for sale. Right. That will almost n- never, if it might even be possible to say that will never happen. It almost will guarantee that if you have that in there, you won't go viral. And and so with that being said, if you go viral, the way to take advantage of this is to basically create retargeting ads that gives a direct offer. And retargeting ads are something you pay for mm-hmm. on these platforms, but they're very they're very useful because... That's how you can take advantage of all of that free reach that you got. Right. But if you don't do that and you only try to go viral, there's 
pretty much the reason why you don't get sales is because there's no sales language in it. Right. Of saying you have something to offer them. Right. And and I like what you're saying is it doesn't really complete the the circuit. It, yep. It's it's part of the puzzle. And if you just kind of take a big step back and look at just marketing in general, yep. um, the the broadest form of marketing you need to do is get in front of people that are interested in your product, service, whatever you're yep. offering, and get them to become aware of who you are, who your business is, and everything. Yep. And you can do that in a lot of different ways, and going viral is just one of those ways. But um, getting people aware of who you are doesn't complete the rest of that customer journey. Exactly. And it doesn't mean that all of those people are ready to purchase or even interested to purchase, even though they're in that in that industry. It's just like, uh, you know, if, if you're a used car salesman, you have this lot with all of these great cars on yep. there, but no one knows who you are. No one even knows that the lot is there. You're not going to make any sales. Correct. So you got to start putting some signs up and some other things to say, hey, we exist and we're over here. But that, too, isn't going to guarantee any sales yep. either because once someone walks onto the parking lot, you have to complete the sales cycle. Exactly. And so you have to have in place some of these other things. And I don't know. I think a lot, a lot of times people think, um, well, I have some products and things for sale on my website. So once they get there, they, no. they will buy. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely false. No. And, and it never works that <laughs> no. way. And you have to really sell it. And, you know, we've talked about this before. I've worked with influencers that had hundreds of thousands of followers and can't generate any sales. Mm-hmm. And it's not like because, zero. Like, like, like literally zero. Like zero. And it's not that yeah. they're bad people or even their audiences are unqualified. It's that they're not using the right messaging and language mm-hmm. to get someone to actually purchase. And there's a skill behind that. It's not, hey, you know, I, I have this for sale, buy it. Mm-hmm. It's you have to really persuade and influence the audience to even want to buy it. And a lot of that has to do with transfer of energy and emotion and excitement. And that's kind of the the side factor to how to make this all work mm-hmm. because I've noticed that people that are building followings online, they, they're they very good at building community and they're very good at the uh, awareness, building awareness, right? Mm-hmm. But you have awareness, nurture, close. That's actually how you monetize whatever it is you're doing. But if you just only focus on the awareness part and you're not nurturing and then you're not closing, you're not going to be able to see the the revenue and sales mm-hmm. that you're working so hard to get and that kind of that that basically takes away the mystery of like well they got all these followers but people aren't buying from me and why why is that well because you're missing a key piece of yeah. you actually have to influence and persuade right. them yeah and what what because i'm a huge nerd one of my favorite things i do when i'm on social media is if i if i ever see a, a reel or a tiktok or whatever that just has millions and millions of views or whatever yep. i uh i will oftentimes just go to their profile and see what their sales process is like and you can tell very quickly those people that are making money yep off of their viral you know strategy yep and those people that have are, are making no money yep and it's almost always this right the people that are making money are those that actually have a sales process in place yep. with a direct next step. Uh, it could that next step could be a small kind of impulse type purchase, yep. or join my email list, or some sort of next step. Because social media is very um, non-committal. Yeah. I'm just swiping through things, so yep. you need to get a, a little mini commitment, and then they have that next step, and then I will sign up for the newsletters yep. and see what their process is, and they increasingly give me the next step, next step, next step to try to get yep. into purchase. And those that make really good money will have their own brand surrounding, uh, uh, you know, I, there's one person that has her own uh, hair product yep. line, and it's like her product line. Yep. That didn't happen overnight. That was an intentional thing that took her probably five years plus of yep. her social media journey to create that. But now it's a very, I, I'm guessing it's an extremely profitable channel for her because it it's easy. It's like an easy transition that flows well, that way. Well, and social media is the perfect awareness tool, mm-hmm. right? So you drive awareness and then uh, when you talk about nurturing, that's giving them a small commitment. Like you said, joining an email list, 
a newsletter, maybe watching a webinar, maybe consuming some other content. But usually the or nurture... Or booking a free call. You do book, that. Yeah. You do that. Yeah. And usually that the nurture sequence goes from social media and then tries to move them off of social media. Mm-hmm. That's typically how you kind of nurture them. That's how you can also pre-qualify who is really interested. So it's like you're taking an offer and saying, you know, hey, here's this piece of paper. Go check out our, you know, restaurant down mm-hmm. the street. You know that the person handing those out, you can get a lot of those out there for awareness, but only a certain percentage will actually walk inside the doors right. to your restaurant. That's nurturing, right? Now they're actually taking a look to see what do you have to offer. Mm-hmm. The close is then to go ahead and actually buy something. Right. Right. So we've got all these different food products that you can try. Would you like to buy one? Mm-hmm. And that's essentially how that works. Look at social media. It's just the perfect awareness tool yeah. to be able to get yourself out there and to build relationships with people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think about this a lot. I think a good kind of comparison is uh, uh, Costco. Yep. free samples, yep. right? Like it's not a new concept, but as as someone with kids, the yeah. number of times <laughs> we're driving past Costco. I mean, this has been different since COVID is starting to come back, but we would drive past Costco and the kids are like, can we get some free samples? Yeah. And then I swear every time you go in there. It's over. You're paying. It's over. <laughs> I, it, it's a 250 to $300, you know, payment True, yep. to do something because I always find something that I want. Yep. Um, but they get you in the door. Yep. Because I... I I'm not driving past Costco and thinking, I need to spend $300 at Costco. Nope. nope. But I would drive past Costco and think, I need that buck fifty hot dog yep. for my kids because they're hungry and it's yep. fast and easy and it's, it's and good. that's how they're nurturing you. And, and so, you know, that's a small little decision. I make that decision and then it's game over yep. because they've got me real did with everything then else. Then it's new computer, <laughs> no, then, then know, next right? month's groceries, <laughs> I know. and you walk out $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> or, or this new thing. They always have these things that are only there for a few weeks. Yep. Ah, but anyway, but it's the same thing with your social media, right? You're getting them in the door. The, the your social media is essentially the Costco sign. Yep. Yep. Right. That that's what that is. The Costco sign, and then that little uh, uh, booklet that they send you each yep. month with the, those deals. That's your social media. Yep. But you got to get them in the door next, and getting them in the door on social media is those uh, join the email list or yep. book a free call or maybe here's a a dollar fifty hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> you can buy something. Get them to engage in some way off of social media. Yep. And then take them to the next step. And I think the 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 big kind of learning lesson you can take from going viral isn't what you think it is, is to put more thought. Don't neglect the thought of the nurture and the closing sequence. Mm-hmm. Most people are only folks, they put so much focus on just the awareness and then wonder why they're not getting the results mm-hmm. that they want. And that's because there's literally no thought into the nurture or closing. And if you take if if you're someone who's very good at getting a lot of reach and getting people to engage and and communicate with you, all you have to do is start to focus on well, what should I naturally give them next to basically pre-qualify them to say that they're possibly mm-hmm. interested in taking another action, so that once they're there, it's a lot easier to close them. But it's pretty hard. You can't skip the nurture part. Right. Right. The nurture part is. People want to go awareness close and get eliminate the, the the middle part. And that's that's a huge mistake because people don't make decisions like that. They're not getting married off of, hey, first date, marriage, right? <laughs> it's first date, then follow-up dates and a bunch of series to kind mm-hmm. of develop the relationship. They don't just say, hey, you know, great to meet you. Let's get married tomorrow. Right. And that's what everyone's trying to do is they use awareness to close versus awareness, nurture, 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 then close. And so, unfortunately, the nurture part, you you have to do it. Right. Right? You can't speed them, speed them through it. Customers buy when they're ready to buy. Yeah. And so you need to be in front of them so that when they are ready to buy, they choose you. Yeah. Right? Same thing with getting married. They don't just get married because you feel like it today and they're just going to get married tomorrow. <laughs> You actually have to like put in the work, and you think <laughs> you do? about what you have to put in the work. Well, think about this with your wife, right, or your <laughs> or your your marriage relationship. Imagine if you were just like, I'm only gonna you know be aware to you, so I can close you, so I can get something from you. <laughs> Forget about <laughs> me helping with the kids or cooking or driving anyone around or having a job and paying for things. 
forget about all that. I don't want to do that. I just yeah. want you to do what I want you to do. <laughs> and I'll show up when I want you to yeah, do it. It's, it's, never, it's never, never, never going to work. Ab- absolutely not. So, I mean, let's talk about maybe some some specifics. I, I think a lot of people, there's a lot of great information on going viral out there. And I have a lot of thoughts surrounding that. Um, so, if you're the kind of person that has done a ton of research on how to go viral, you know the best songs or the hashtags or or how to do these little hacks to make people watch your video over and over and over again through engaging yeah. or whatever. All of those things. Like, how can someone shift from that mindset? Because that is a very kind of... It's a different mindset. Siloed mindset into the nurture and the close mindset. Because it's really not a, if you build it, they will come kind of situation. Yeah, sure. That, that you, you've got to shift into this other mindset. And if, if people are like me, I have a hard time shifting from one mindset like that where I've been singularly focused into this other kind of mindset. Yeah. So I actually think the, the way to shift and transition from one mindset to the other is to actually ask someone who's really good at the nurture or the closing sequence and ask them for tips such as here's a here's a perfect example i come from the sales world Mm -hmm. so i i have a a better ability to close and nurture more than the awareness part Uh right and so i actually have to ask people well how do you get more awareness Right. Right. What are you what are you doing to generate more of this awareness that you're doing? Because once they get in, I'm able to sell them. Right. When you go into a different mindset, you have to almost think all of these people that come through, you have to start thinking about speaking to them one one to one mentally. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the shift. The shift is like, okay, once they're kind of in your ecosystem, instead of thinking of mass. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's what awareness is. Yeah, it's thinking in mass. How do I get the masses to start doing stuff? Right. Now you have to start thinking one on one, and 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 that mindset is all about. Well, if I had Blake come in after seeing something, how do I need to speak to him in order for him to want to take the next steps? A lot of that has to do with uh, power questions, asking the right questions, and pretending you're actually speaking to this individual mm-hmm. and saying like, what are their biggest desires? What are the biggest fears? What are the biggest benefits they want to get? What what would they like to ultimately achieve? Mm-hmm. And then start speaking this language, yeah. right? And so that language is a lot different than speaking to the masses. Right. And that's how you shift your mindset into the nurture and close is you start to think one-to-one versus one-to-many. Right. And that's if you can combine those two, that's where you're going to be able to have a ton of success. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... I think that's really key is just trying to figure out what they want. So back to this artist. Yep. When I was talking with some of the other artists that were asking me questions, uh, you know, how that would work if you went viral and everything. My first question was, well, what, people who follow, what? why would they f- follow that account? What, yep. what do they want out of that? Yep. Um, and the answer was almost always... Well, they'd like to maybe learn a little bit more about the technique, yep. or they or they think the art is is interesting, and they're tr- trying to learn more. But when you go to their website, they're selling pieces like yep. physical art pieces, which is great. But there's no learning technique if you yep. buy this physical art piece. So if someone's going to buy an art piece, they're simply buying it either because they like it, or, or they're big fans of the artist. But those things take a lot of time to yep. kind of build up at scale. Yep. Um, and so the first thing I said is I'm like, well, why don't you pair a physical art piece with something educational? And after talking a little bit, I recommended, uh, well, let's find something that's really easy to do. I yep. said, just do a quick time lapse of a small, because she, she make many of them make these smaller pieces that are yep. kind of more approachable. Uh, I said, just record a time lapse of you doing one of these pieces in one sitting. Yep. So, and, and then if someone buys that art piece, they get the exclusive time lapse video of that, and they, now they own own that video, and they're the only person that that yep. gets that video. But now they're learning. Uh, it, it accomplishes a few things. They they get the piece of art, and it's a small piece of art, so it's not crazy expensive. Yep. Uh, they they get to watch some of the technique, and they can just learn by watching. The artist themselves doesn't have to have their creative process interrupted by yep. trying to explain what they're doing because that's a that's a concern because yep. it makes it take a lot longer. Yep. Uh, and now they have this thing that kind of bridges the gap between 
what they're trying, what the their followers are trying to get out of the social, uh, out of hitting the follow button on their account, yep. and making that sale. Yep. And so they're putting together a couple of those offers to to test them out, and you know we'll we'll, we'll see how that works. But my guess that's is kind of work. that's yeah. My guess is too. Right? But that's the thought process you got to think about. You're yep. like, how do we how do we kind of bridge that gap? You just have to, and I think that's why I rec- I do recommend you reach out to people that are kind of opposite-minded thinking, mm-hmm. right? So nurture and closing-minded thinking. Because, like, for me, I have uh, quite a few influencers that reach out to me to help them close the gap because they're very good. I mean, I've got a couple of clients that get millions and millions of views every single week across multiple platforms, but they, they're not super effective – on their own Mm -hmm. and selling the stuff. And so they have me to come in and actually tell them, say these types of things. And that, in fact, we just had one the other day we did. in just a few days we sold 50, I want to say $52,000, just like two or three days (laughs) worth of product. And we sold out and we, so now we need to get more. And I keep telling them that we need to get more, but (laughs) because I understand they're very good at driving that awareness. And if they can close the gap Mm -hmm. to being able to sell, right, nurture and close them better, then that's where they're able to put money in their pocket. Yeah. Right. And just think like if we had unlimited products for this, so 50,000 in a few days, we probably could end up selling a couple hundred thousand dollars worth in a month. Uh, but we've run into this problem multiple times, and so I'm trying to have a talk to with them. With, with inventory. With inventory, because that's a whole <laughs> other game, uh-huh. is when you're trying to scale, inventory becomes a problem when you become very good at the nurture and closing, because then you have to plan this out. Right. Like, how do I ship out this mm-hmm. many products in this amount of time? Yeah. So this is like a big learning curve. This, I think on the surface, people think generating money mm-hmm. is like, like, a one, like a single activity. And you generate it. But there's multiple processes in there, right? Awareness, nurture, close. Then you got inventory, shipping things out. So this is like a, an ongoing thing that you have to just yeah. practice, basically. Well, I think that demonstrates one of the misconceptions I, I see a lot when I'm working with people and, and chatting with people about how this works. And and it's a misconception I think it's very easy to have happen. And because on social media, you have a person. The person is the face of their business. Even yep. if it's it's their account under their own name and everything, they're that face. And so it's very easy to think, well, they're doing all of this pretty much by themselves. No, and maybe no, no, they have no. their spouse or husband or whatever helping behind the scenes. Um, and it's simply just not true. At all. They have... They, they they reach out to people like you and me yep. to help bridge those gaps because everyone has this specialty of their skills. And if, yep. if you know, your particular specialty is getting that awareness, yep. your specialty is probably not managing inventory. It's probably not even anywhere yeah. in that realm. You might right? not even know you need to manage inventory. Right. <laughs> and that's fine. Like, you you shouldn't expect yourself to understand all of those yep. pieces. If, you're, if, if your specialty is getting that awareness... Closing probably isn't a, a great specialty of yours because they're they're still quite different. Yep. And so what you what you need to do is bring in some trusted people that could just be like a friend or yep. an accountability partner if you're a small business uh, and and don't have the cash flow to hire someone or that's a consultant like yep. you and me. That's what what you know we we help yep. a lot with. Uh, or if you're bigger, that's when you start hiring full time or or something along those lines. But yep. I mean, I have a I have um, a, a client that I've worked with that is is really big and kind of the guru and yep. success area. Yeah. Um, and they have on social media, it seems like it's all just them doing yeah. all these yep. things, uh, and it's because that's a simpler message. Yep. But behind the scenes, they have about happen. fifteen full time employees. Yep. And several contractors yep. that help behind the scenes of that whole process of nurturing people, writing the emails, uh, getting on the phone calls to to talk to them about closing, and yep. then and then closing those those deals. But this is a company that does millions and millions and yep. millions every year in sales, uh, and they sell annual memberships. And, and the annual memberships are anywhere from ten grand a year to two hundred fifty grand a year. Yep. And and. But on social media, it looks like I'm just doing all this stuff myself. Not the case. Well, even it, I'm happy you said that because that was one of my biggest misconceptions early on was 
you know, you see guys like, you know, I think one of the big players that's been doing it for a long time, Tony Robbins. Yeah. You know, they call the the, the guru model, right? Mm-hmm. Which is you have the individual and then they have this huge team. They've got hundreds of people working for them. But it on the surface, it seems like Tony Robbins is the one doing, doing all the things. Like, Doing everything and directing everything, and, but but he's not even close. And the same with Gary V, right? Mm-hmm. Gary V is one that everybody knows, and he has you know he's got a videographer, he's got editors, he's got this huge team of people that are distributing his content. He's got certain networks, even coming up with content ideas. Yep. Like Gary V is not the guy coming up with all the ideas. He's basically just a spokesperson. He really is, and that's. But a lot of these businesses, that's what they are. Is they they're an individual, any personal brand that you see. It's not one person doing all of this. Mm-mm. It's one person delivering the message and a lot of people mm-hmm. doing all the other stuff. And so if you're out there thinking you need to do all of this yourself and you're asking yourself, why can't I ever get all of this done? That's why. Yeah. It's 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 a job for like five or ten people. Minimum. <laughs> Minimum, right? But everybody's got to start somewhere. Yep. And so if you're if you're doing this all by yourself and you're looking for, okay, I need to bring someone else on, a great place to do is, like I said, accountability partner. Find yep. someone else that's doing something similar. Uh, if, if you're good at the awareness, find someone that's good at the closing and say, yep. hey, can we partner up and I will help you yep. come up with awareness ideas and you can help me come up with closing ideas and yep. we'll meet regularly and then maybe I'll even do some of your work for you, and you can even do some of your, my work for me, yep. and and do that trade. And then as that starts working, you can start looking into uh, you know consultants. Uh, again, that's what that's where kind of you and I have have yep. hopped in this space. And consultants don't have to be crazy expensive. It yep. kind of depends on on the interaction. But sometimes it's like, hey, I just need someone to meet with me once a month. Yeah. What's your What's your hourly rate for like a once once a month? phone call that's maybe yep. an hour and a half or two hours long to help me organize some of these thoughts, whatever. Or, or it could be a full done for you kind of a thing. There's yep. lots of different ways to kind of make that work. But it's trust me, it's worth it. If you're if you're investing in this for the long term and you want to really grow a business, th- these are investments you should be making. And I know for, for my own business, I've made these investments mm-hmm. and make them every month. And it's, I would never not do it now. Right. Right. It's it's part of the business. And I know you cannot you just can't get rid of it. It's absolutely necessary for growth. And it's very valuable. And people, you know, like I have my assistant. She does a ton of stuff for me. And I can't now I can't even imagine trying to do all the stuff she's doing on my own. <laughs> like it I just can't even imagine it. So these are things that you have to think and structure. But you know, we started with going viral. It's not everything you need. This is a very valuable point. You need nurturing, you need closing, and you need a team to help you. This is not a one a one person sport, mm-hmm. right? right? This is this is you really need to have support in multiple ways, and you have to have strategy. And so, really think about your business, simplify it first, and go get the awareness, nurture, close sequence down for your business, and then start thinking how do I amplify it. All right, there you go. Well, let's wrap this up. Uh, Greg, how can people get in touch with you? You can go to gregmarshall.co, book a free strategy session. And what about you? Uh, just blakebeast.com slash SM3 is the best way to get in touch with me. Great. Well, until next time, hope you enjoyed this uh, this nice convo podcast, <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.